This video is being made to support a course that I'm teaching on introductory proof writing. And so I'm loosely following the book called The Book of Proof by Richard Hammack. I'll put some information about it on the screen right now. I highly suggest this book if you're trying to learn how to write careful mathematical proofs. I think it's a great book. So here we want to look at the notion of a mathematical statement. And so a mathematical statement for our definition will be a complete sentence using either mathematical notation or words that is true or false. There's no room for interpretation. So here are some examples and companion non-examples. So our first example says adding 3 to both sides of x minus 3 equals 12 yields x equals 15. So that's a nice complete sentence way of solving that very simple algebra problem. And here's a companion non-example that says add 3 to both sides. So I guess that's a complete sentence, but it's not always true or false. And in fact, it doesn't really provide much context. The next we have if 3x minus 9 is bigger than or equal to 0, then x is bigger than or equal to 3. So that would be um, a mathematical statement. Versus the non-example, what x satisfy 3x minus 9 is bigger than or equal to 0? So that's a question. Now I want to point out that when we're writing our proofs, we want to use all mathematical sentences. So there should be no room for interpretation in terms of the truth or the falseness in the sentences within your proofs. Okay, here's some more examples. And so these two are exactly the same mathematical statement. One is just written with mathematical notation, whereas the other one's written with words. So we have three as a natural number, and here we have three as an element of the natural number. So those are exactly the same. Again, this is just using math notation. And I should point out here that this is a true mathematical statement. Now, sort of a bonus question is, is zero a natural number? Would that be a true mathematical statement or a false mathematical statement? So here's the next one. The square root of two is a rational number. Or in symbols, the square root of two in L is an element of the rationals. So that's clearly a false mathematical statement, but it's still a mathematical statement because there's nothing open to interpretation there. The next we have root two is irrational, or the square root of two is not an element of the rationals. That's a true mathematical statement. Here we have the set containing negative one, zero, and one is a subset of the integers. So that is true. And there we have the set containing negative one, zero, and one is a subset of the natural numbers. So that is false. Then finally, we have this example at the bottom, which says if f from r to r is differentiable, then it is continuous. So usually in an advanced calculus or a beginning real analysis class, you would prove something like this, um, but this is most definitely true. But even if you don't know whether or not it's true or false, you can probably guess that this is a mathematical statement. You just don't know whether it's true or false. But you can see that it's a mathematical statement by the construction of the sentence. So let's maybe get rid of this and we'll look at some more examples. So next we're going to look at the notion of a named statement. So like I have written here, sometimes we'll want to name certain statements and we'll usually use letters, capital letters, from the middle of the alphabet for those names. So for instance, here, here's a statement P, which says for every natural number n, two to the n minus one is prime. So that's most definitely a statement. And notice we've given it the name P, but this statement is false. And this is like well-known primes that are of this form are called Fermat primes, but you don't have to go very far to get a counterexample here. In other words, a number of the form two to the n minus one that is not prime. So I urge you to look into it to find out what that number is. And then here's a statement Q. So the function f of x equals x cubed minus three x squared is continuous. So this is a true statement. So it's well known that all polynomial functions are continuous. You might say, well, why would we want to name statements? 
And it's not super clear right now, but this kind of thing will be clear when we start to introduce the arithmetic of logic and come up with when statements are equivalent or what statements imply others or finding the opposite of a statement or something like that. It'll be nice to have names for these statements. Okay, now sometimes statements are gonna depend on variables, like this one right here. So P of X, so that's a statement P, which depends on an input X. And it says, if an integer X ends in zero, then it is divisible by 10. So notice this is true regardless of which X we plug in there. Notice if we plug in 100, so in other words, if we look at the statement P of 100 and we read that off, this statement is going to read, if the integer 100 ends in zero, then it is divisible by 10. Well, that's most definitely a true statement. Then if we look at the statement P of 27, well, if we read that off, it says, if the integer 27 ends in zero, then it is divisible by 10. Well, 27 does not end in zero, so it doesn't have to be divisible by 10 for this to be true. Now, this is verse versus an open sentence where the truth depends on the variable or the variables. You could have a multivariable statement or open sentence. So like this one right here, Q of X says the real number X is rational. So obviously all real numbers are not rational. So sometimes this will be true and sometimes this will be false. So for instance, if we take Q of three quarters, that's most definitely true because we know that three quarters is a rational number. But if we take something like Q of pi, that's gonna be false because it's well known that pi is an irrational number. Or maybe Q of the square root of three, that's also going to be false. Finally, we have this two variable open sentence, RFG, and it says the function F is an antiderivative of G. So let's look at an example where this is true and an example where it's false. So if we look at r one half x squared x, this is going to be true because one half x squared is an antiderivative of x or one half x squared, if you take the derivative of that, you get x. You know, that's by the derivative antiderivative relationship. Now versus, if we look at r of tangent x comma x, we see that that is false because tangent of x is not an antiderivative of x or the derivative of tangent x is not equal to x. So you might say, well, when, we would, when would we need variables for statements or these open sentences? And again, that'll be a bit more clear when we look at techniques of proofs, especially mathematical induction. And that's a good place to stop.